hey guys so we're going to see um, what is shared disk and uh, what is its purpose so Microsoft um, released a feature called shared disk back in 2020 and uh, they have provided this uh, facility where you can actually share the disk between one or multiple virtual machines and you might wonder like you know what what is its purpose and why do we have to share a disk across a multiple uh, virtual machines okay so to explain that uh, this is this uh, schematic diagram that I have represented where you can see there is two virtual machines and these two virtual machines are going to have a shared disk which is a Microsoft provided one and then you right, right in the middle you actually see um, a SQL server shared cluster type application so this is assume that this is a, a SQL server row and you have two web applications or whatever it could be a J2E application whatever application it is you have two applications running on two virtual machines okay and uh, excuse me so assume that you know the virtual one machine um, application is up and uh, it's doing its work and you know persisting the data on the SQL server also it is pushing the backend data to the shared disk and everything and uh, for some other reason right this virtual machine goes down that means that the application that's hosted on the virtual machine is also down and there is an impact having said that so in this scenario how one can actually go about and uh, you know have the service up and running so there is no impact to the business right so that is the reason we have another application which is hosted on the other box which also have the access to shared disk so since it's a clustered application the application core on both the virtual machines will be on to the latest release okay and uh, you would probably do a, a database failover meaning that um, you will do that failover either through code or through the manual process and basically you give the right access to this virtual machine so for example i'll say that like this so virtual one box will have right access to the shared disk and also to the db day, db sql server db during that right exclusive access this virtual machine too will not be able to write anything to the shared disk okay that means that is there is actually a lock that is being given to this virtual machine or this applications so once this application goes down and then you do a failover then the virtual machine to all the application that it's running will have a right access to the shared disk and thereby you will not have um, a collision between the virtual machines or two application that is being hosted so basically this is a HA environment and uh, you have a common data which is accessed by both the virtual box so I'm inside the Azure portal and uh, I will walk you through how to do uh, how to configure a shared disk so you basically go to the portal and then uh, click on the disk and then you just do a new disk and uh, before doing that we should actually be you know seeing the resource group where it is being deployed and then you should map it so right now it's in south central US so it's always good to keep all the disk as on the same region so let's get into the uh, demo so I'm inside the Azure portal um, we are going to actually uh, create a shared disk to do that uh, let's go on to the disk and then you say create disk go to the resource group map it and uh, you can just mention like uh, shared data disk okay and uh, right now we don't need any availability zone or source type we can just make it as none since it's just a demo and the main important factor right now here is actually the size because we need to see one factor that is very important when you want to configure a shared disk as you can see that you know there are multiple disks that are available 
but what we are very interested is on this side which says that max share what does it mean is like attach assured man what does it mean is actually is attach a assured managed disk to multiple virtual machine simultaneously and what this parameter tells is basically is to how many virtual machine can you actually share this disk so right now since we are only doing a demo i'm going to select this one and this is exactly can be shared between two virtual machines take for take for example the last one where if we configure this it can be shared across 10 virtual machines for now let's just click on this two and then uh, click ok and then now we have the premium SSD so before uh, you know configuring uh, this I want to talk about the limitation of few limitation of shared disk uh, let's just go back to that uh, schematic diagram so the limitation of shared disk is actually right now is uh, we can only configure ultra disk and then uh, premium SSD disk um, so I showed you on the Azure portal where you can actually we have actually configured only the premium SSD as you can see here. So the another li uh, limitation is that it can only enable on the data disk. So if we cannot do that on the OS disk, meaning that if your OS is corrupted, we have no way of, you know, like uh, doing any of the uh, things that can, you know, save us unless, you know, you configure um, Azure backups. And uh, the third important thing is like Azure site recovery support is not available yet on the shared disk. And there are other limitations uh, regarding the disk ops and everything which have shared the official uh, Microsoft link on the YouTube descriptions and uh, you can see that. So let's just quick back, um, jump back to the Azure portal. So let me do a review and create. Okay, the validation is passed and now I'm going to create the disk. So it's doing its initial deployment. So next thing that what we're going to do is actually go ahead and, and create two Windows virtual machines. And um, I will walk you through how to, you know, configure a shared disk for one of the Windows virtual machine. And then uh, for the another with, uh, virtual machine, I will go and do it on the back since it will kill us our time okay uh, so the deployment is complete um, we can go to the resource and yep we can uh, have the disk ready and uh, we should be able to right now the disk state is unattached because we have not created any data virtual machines and then attached to the disk so let's move on to creating a windows virtual machine just basically um, you have to do add virtual machines and uh, just resource group and then let's call this as windows uh, production box okay and then south central is there and uh, let's go ahead and choose windows server 2009 and i i like apple so i'll type apple okay i i know you don't care what i like so Let's move on to typing my password. Okay, I'm not going to tell you that. And then moving on to disk, right? So we should actually go and uh, attach an uh, existing disk because we have already created one. So if you do that, and you should actually see a shared disk that we just created. It. You just have to press it on and then do a review and create. Once that, once the virtual machine is uh, being deployed, we'll get it on to the virtual machine and I will tell you how to initialize that uh, volume and then uh, we'll move out like that. The validation is passed. We'll go ahead and create the Windows virtual machine. Uh, I will click create and uh, we will wait for some more time. If it takes, I probably will uh, go and pass the recording okay guys so the virtual machine has been deployed let's get on to the resource let's click, let's click on connect rdp and uh, let's download the rdp file and log it on to the windows box 
And if you're not familiar on how to create the Windows Virtual Machine and log it on to the RDP, I have another video, uh, previous video, which I will link it to this uh, description and also you can see on the top right corner of the uh, video. So uh, we are getting inside the virtual machines. Uh, it's just booting up. Just give it, give it one more second. Yep, you can see that it's coming up. Okay, we are um, inside the Windows uh, virtual machine. Let's make it out. Uh, let's just wait for the server manager to boot up because uh, we need to get it on to the files and storage to initialize the data disk. Okay, once the server manager dashboard is up, you basically have to click on to the files and storage and then we go back to the disk and you should see the disk that we have attached and you see, can see that we have our disk but right now it's in online status but it's an unknown partition so let's go and uh, right click it and then you do an initialize and once you initialize you can have that status back to gpt okay now we have to go and create a volume for this so that uh, we can go and uh, persist data so just click on couple of next 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 um yep and then we should do a create once that is complete uh, i will show you uh, on the file explorer that we should have a f drive that's basically our shared disk. So minimize it to a right click here and then do a file explorer and then move on to this PC and there you go guys. So we have um, a new volume called F and uh, remember that this new volume will be shared to the another virtual machine uh, that we uh, saw that on the schematic diagram. So now uh, that we have created a Windows box and uh, we have also uh, um, attached the shared disk and we have created a volume and done everything, right? So I'm not going to create another Windows box and do the same configuration. Um, I will leave it up to you guys. It's just the same process. You just have to go and, you know, create another Windows virtual machine and make sure that, you know, during the uh, wizard, you have to map your shared disk and then the rest is actually like, you know, it's out of the scope. Uh, as I said, you know, like you can have this shared disk uh, to multiple virtual machine, but that all depends on the type of disk that uh, we have configured or you have configured, right? So I have chosen a premium SSD max, max share is two. So right now we can, uh, I can, you know, go ahead and uh, share the disk with two virtual machines. And, you know, if you want to have, um, uh, a shareable disk right now right now what we have done is we have only you know attached these two disks but let's say like you know you want to create a, a folder here uh, using the virtual machine one and then you want that folder to be appearing to the virtual machine two then we have to configure something called a file server uh, which is also inbuilt um, with uh, windows os and uh, if you want to do that you can do that so because I told you like if you are going to create a clustered application you may want to configure that file server server and then attach this disk and then make sure that the two virtual machines are registered to that so that you know the the data can be shared across the machines so you, if you are interested in doing that so I can probably give you the link for that configurations and I saw a very good blog where it you know it, it walks us through how to configure the file server and uh, you know so thank you guys for watching this and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to uh, post that in the comment section